starts to happen, it feels like your body's expanding and it hurts so bad. Hey y'all, welcome to my BBL tell all video. This has been a highly requested video, so I'm so excited to be doing this for you guys, sharing with you all of the information I have on my journey from the very beginning when I first decided that I wanted a BBL all the way up to this very moment. So, Grab your pen, pencil, a notebook, just to take some notes if that's what you wanna do. Maybe use a little notes app in your phone and a bottle of water. I sure do need one. Let me go find one, cause I, uh, this is gonna be a lot of talking. Also, if you are here for my body reveal, you're in the right place now. I wanna say at right now, two weeks and one day post-op, this is not a final this is what I look like. And I don't want anyone to think that after 15 days post-op, that's your final BBL body. That's not the case. This is just an update. So if you want that body view, stick around. So this all began in 2020. I think on my Instagram, I said 2019, but I misspoke. It was actually 2020. It was when I was just starting to go back to work uh, during the pandemic. I had all of my like, quarantine weight and I was just thinking like in my work uniform I was like I want a BBL like I want a BBL I feel like why not like I just want the enhancement I want a BBL and at the time I let myself get swayed out of it by what other people thought about the idea of me having plastic surgery and that was wrong on my part but everything I feel like is perfectly timed. I'm honestly not upset that I didn't get it back then. I just feel like I'm a lot more mature now. I am I was ready. I was definitely ready right now at the time that I got it back then. I don't think I was ready. So the timing, not mad at it, but that was when the seed really planted. I really didn't commit to the idea of getting my BBL until October, September, October of this year. In September or October of this year, that was when I took the leap and I started calling practices. I was researching doctors, like really trying to figure out who was available because I knew like I had all of this vacation time this year that I didn't take at work and I was gonna have enough time to recover from the surgery. So I was like, okay, why not just do it like at the end of the year, use my vacation time and that just be it like like just take the leap and do it so i started calling around i researched so many doctors like i looked up celebrity doctors like popular doctors youtube trying to figure out like who got what done by who it, it was an extensive search i'm not gonna lie in it i feel like it got slightly obsessive not in a bad way but in a fun way like ooh, she looks really good who did her body like that type of way and that's not a bad thing i feel like if you're gonna make the investment in your body like a huge investment like this you should be looking at all of your options like if you're considering getting a bbl or any plastic surgery for that matter like do your research and take your time i would say that the way i did it was a bit rush like starting all of this in september october and getting my procedure done in December of this same year like that's that's what three three maybe four months that's more like probably like three months like that's pretty fast um I'll say for me since I got a skinny BBL I didn't have a lot of fat to begin with I didn't feel like the procedure was that major for me at that time now post-op I definitely do and let's get into why so I initially wanted to go to a completely different doctor. The doctor is located in Dallas and I was still living in Dallas at the time. So I was like, okay, I'll just get the procedure done while living in Dallas and then do my recovery in my apartment there. Like it, it all just made sense to me. And that's not the way it worked out because these doctors, especially the good, the great ones, they're booked. Like his books could not get on it before the end of the year and whenever I would talk to the consultant like she'd call and say hey there's an opening that opening by the time I'm able to get back to her like during the workday it's gone so 
that was pretty frustrating and it just kind of got to a point i was just like i i have to find another doctor this is not going to work and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to keep ending up in this cycle and the year is going to end and i'm not going to get anything done so i went back to the drawing board and i actually found my doctor here's the big doctor reveal i actually found my doctor dr william miami um on a youtube video i think it was either youtube or tiktok but i did see him mentioned in both a youtube video and a tiktok video and maybe what i did was i back searched the other like if i found him on youtube i back searched on tiktok and if i found him on tiktok i back searched him on youtube and i really loved his work like he had this really nice curvy silhouette he did hips amazingly that's really what like hooked me because i don't have hips like if you've seen me before if you've seen my instagram you'll see i just have really deep hip dips and that was my biggest thing that i wanted to go with this bbl so i was like okay he can do hips really well i feel like he will get my hip dips so i reached out via phone like if you look him up online i'll have the link in the description box below if you go to his website call the number on the website then you will reach a consultant and that person is basically going to help you get booked and scheduled for your surgery so they're gonna take you through um like basic details that they just have to tell you then they'll say okay like send some pictures of your body um you also provide like your weight and your height so they can calculate your bmi because that's really important it's your body mass index if i'm not mistaken and they use that as one thing that determines whether you are or aren't eligible for surgery it varies the requirements vary by doctor and also by state so don't be deterred by that like it's not oh like i think my bmi is too high or too low i won't even try like try at least reach out to the doctor and let the doctor tell you now and even if the doctor tells you no they may give you some guidance as to things that you could do and they may be really easy things to adjust your bmi either higher or lower so that you are eligible for the surgery so i sent in my pictures they had my bmi and the consultant told me like hey according to the doctor you would be a great candidate for the bbl that was great news i wasn't sure if i had enough fat so i was really happy to hear that and they just told me like you know you are on the smaller side so don't um lose any weight now at the time i didn't have a scale at home so the weight that i gave them actually was a little high i thought it was 133 and i was actually like 128 so i confirmed my surgery date over the phone of december 14th i paid a 250 dollars deposit and i had my date i was good locked in from there and then i started my journey trying to gain more weight that didn't work out we're like i i know we did the whole thing on instagram just it didn't it didn't really work out maybe it did i don't think it did i thought it did i don't think it did but it was fun during that time i also worked up my hemoglobin i was taking folic acid vitamin c and iron supplements like i take one of each so that's three supplements at one time daily or every other day it was more every other day because the iron can make you constipated but what that does is it works up your hemoglobin levels because there is a hemoglobin minimum and basically like if you don't meet that minimum your lab test will not qualify you for getting the surgery like they'll push your surgery back ask you to reschedule so those lab test requirements are serious and they're hard because you don't want to get on that surgery table and the worst happen so i was eating a lot i was taking my supplements also going through my move if you've been watching my vlog it was a lot going on during that time um, but i also stayed positive i kept moving around all of these things were part of my process for preparing for the surgery now a big point that i know everyone is concerned about is how much does this bbl cost and we're going to do a price breakdown right now so here's our price breakdown the surgery itself is $8,183 
if you decide to pay with credit instead of cash like as in like debit card that counts as cash but like credit like care credit stuff like that there is a surcharge of about a thousand dollars on top of that eight thousand one hundred and eighty three dollars uh, my Fajas, I got three of them. Two of them I got from uh, the surgery practice, the OG Fajas. Those are $150 each. And then I got one more from Pretty Girl Curves. And that one retails at $170. But there was a $20 coupon available on the website. So it knocked it down to $150. That brings my Faja total up to $450. The massages, $450 for five from the surgery practice. And then $350 for four from a local plastic surgery practice here in Atlanta. So that brings the massage total up to $800. I had to do a drug test in my pre-op, like for the surgery. So I had to pay $50 for the drug test. The recovery home, $1,500. It was $250 a night. So I stayed for six nights, $1,500. Home care supplies, I definitely like did a lot on this part. Uh, but basically, if you watch my BBL preparation video, all of those things that I got, um, including the foams, my outboard, and my backboard, it was about six hundred dollars. I rounded up to about six hundred dollars. And last, my lab test was four hundred and fifty-seven dollars. Like the blood test that does the hemoglobin and all of that, four hundred and fifty-seven dollars from LabCorp. So the grand total for the entire BBL experience, which it excludes some it excludes some Ubers and then like one night hotel stay. I also didn't include airfare because I didn't pay for my flights so everything that I named like that I gave you a dollar amount for sums up to $12,040 so everything that I'm telling you today you can put a price tag on it $12,040 now that's just with Dr. William at 305 Plastic Surgery that does not go for any other doctors because like I only got my surgery done from this one doctor now let's get to the good stuff when I got to Miami. So I got to Miami the day of my pre-op appointment. So I literally just got off the plane, left the airport and Ubered from the airport to the plastic surgery practice. If you do this, you will not be the first girl to do this, nor the last. I was literally in the waiting room with like my suitcase and everything, like my, my BBL pillow and a bag, the robe, like, it was a lot, but like everyone was calm. It was nothing new. When you do this, if you do this, I promise you will not be doing anything new. Do not feel shy. Do not feel bad. None of that. Like they've seen it all before, okay? So when they first take me to the back, they had me do like my drug test, my pregnancy test, and my COVID test. Everything came back good, of course. And then there's um, basically a pre-examination. It's really just like when they did the pictures, like I sent in my pictures for them to tell me I was a good candidate, but they do it in person. So um, it was like a nurse and she looked at me and she like poked at my stomach. It kind of hurt a little bit, but like she like felt it and um, I had to pull my pants down to about probably like knee where my knees are so she could also see how my butt looks. And she was like, okay. Um, don't know if you have enough fat for like hips or anything but you should you should get like a, a decent result but you just don't have a lot of fat so don't expect too much of a difference and I was just like okay but I'm, I'm not saying like she was wrong or she didn't know what she was talking about or anything I accepted the advice but I just had in my mind like girl I'm gonna look good <laughs> whatever the case may be I'm gonna look good <laughs> so so you finish that up, um, she just gave me everything I needed to know about the process and then I go back to waiting and while I'm sitting, I am handed a packet. It's like, it's, it's so many pages. I feel like it was like a hundred pages that I had to sign. It was so many and you're just agreeing. Basically, yes, I agree to this surgery. I agree that, to everything you're gonna do to me. 
I agree to the financial responsibility. Um, I agree that I'm going to show up the way I'm supposed to show up. And I accept risk, like, all of that. Lots of, plenty of pages. You also fill out, like, your information. Um, your, whoever's going to pick you up, you have to put in their information. Because when they come to pick you up, first they have to be called. The practice has to call and say, hey, this person's ready to go. And then they come and then they have to prove that they are who they are. And they're not just giving this person who's pretty incoherent to a complete stranger. So uh, that was really good to see. I provided all of that information. Um, and then I paid and that was really about it. After that, I left. I finished my day the way I planned to. I stayed at a hotel in Miami. Um, I actually ended up staying like by Ocean Drive, not quite the way I planned to do it, but it was a really cute coincidence. So it was a really, really cute night in Miami. My friends came and visited me, Dej and Co. I love y'all, I love you girls. That night I had to wash with the uh, bacteria inhibiting soap, the Hiba Cleanse, uh, just to keep myself, I guess, from having any bacteria on me that could um, cause infection during the surgery or after the surgery. I washed with it that night and I also washed with it the following morning. The following morning, like the day of my surgery, uh, after I washed with the HIPAA cleanse again, I put on literally just the robe. Like just the robe. Um, nothing underneath. The practice didn't provide me with my fajas. They just kept them and then when my surgery was done, they put me in the faja. So, I just had on my robe. I literally Ubered there like, so glad my Uber driver doesn't know that I have on a robe with nothing under it. And I had on my compression socks. I'm literally wearing compression socks right now. Like, I've been wearing them since I got my surgery. I was also wearing like, house slippers like this is what they tell you to wear and it makes complete sense because like it's not like you can do your shoes or anything but it definitely looked like you're really comfy for it to be like like you're you're out you're outside of the house but i did it and i did it with still my luggage and everything because i hadn't been to the recovery home yet i stayed in the hotel that night so luggage purses all of that had it next to me i'm wearing my comfy stuff i pull up to the plastic surgery practice i go in um they had me test one more time i believe it was a drug test um could have been a pregnancy test but i think it was a drug test i don't know if they used the same cup or what but i did that and then i go to the back they had me dressed in the the cap the surgical thing that you have the patients wear i don't know what that's called net i'm sorry i don't know the name but they had me wear one of those and they had me wear the gown and like nothing else oh and the compression socks i kept on the compression socks but that was it and then once i had that on in comes the dr william miami and it was like kind of a starstruck moment not gonna lie because i'd been watching his videos faithfully like I watched his videos day in, day out. Every night before bed, I'm watching his videos, like listening to his advice for dolls. By the way, girls that get plastic surgery, you know, we kind of use dolls in, in the surgery community. So if you hear me say that, that's what I'm referring to. So he comes in and this is a brief encounter. This is a, like the first and last time I see him, by the way. So he walks in and he's like, hi. Uh, how are you? I'm like, oh, good. How are you? And so he sits and he like examines my body and takes a look and, and basically evaluates how much fat I have on me, um, how it's going to be transferred. And then he marks me up. If you see his YouTube videos, like literally the same thing, like he marks me up. I get to see how he marks me up. You know, it really doesn't mean too much to me personally i don't know what these lines mean but i saw it it was pretty cool and he's like do you have any questions for me i verified with him that like me sharing this process on social media is okay he said yep that's fine cool great and then he leaves the whole encounter 
does not last two minutes. I, I kid you not. I kid you not. And I think for me personally, that was the only part that's like, man, like I wish I had more inner interface with the doctor through the process. If that if I had to say one thing I wish were different, it would be that. But seeing my results and how good they are, I honestly can't complain because it's like he knows what he's doing. If you don't have to be in my face a whole lot because you know what you're doing, I have no complaints. Do you like but I know for a lot of people that can be uncomfortable and that's okay. I think that's absolutely okay and valid. And if even with his results, you just need a different experience, that's okay. I say seek the experience that you feel is best for you because your comfort is really important in this. So after he leaves, they then take me to the surgery room, I think. I think. I'm not sure. And I say that because... This was the last thing I saw before I woke up from surgery. So they escort me to this room, they put me on this table, and they start strapping me down. Like, like y'all, strapping me down. And the anesthesiologist was like, okay, you're gonna feel a little burn. And so I'm like, okay. So in comes the burn. You know, when people say that, you're not really, I mean, I'm not really thinking like this is really finna burn. So it goes in and I look at the other nurse, doctor person. I'm like, oh, and literally all that little after that little eye roll back, my eyes went closed, shut. I, I felt it like closed and I was out of here. Sleep done. By the time my eyes opened back up, I was being wheeled out of the facility. I'm not joking, not joking. So I was put under general anesthesia. I know that there are some doctors out there who do their BBLs under local anesthesia. And I'm no medical expert. I'm just a patient. And me as a patient personally, no. No. Like, no. <laughs> this is not something I would want to be awake during. So I personally am really pleased with being under the general anesthesia. I feel like the whole process from them putting me to sleep to me waking up and even after was pretty smooth so when i woke up from surgery they were wheeling me out and like i remember my eyes fluttering open and i was just really cold i was really cold and i just felt sore i can't say i was just in pain i wasn't i, I just wasn't in this world of pain i was just really cold and it was the anesthesia so they put me in the back of the car the seats are like laying flat so that i can lay down at this point the owner of the recovery home has come to pick me up so carrie this her name is carrie by the way at a snatched and curved recovery home i highly recommend i'm gonna get to why in a few moments but she comes and i interacted with her a few times um and i know what she looked like because of a group chat on facebook so when i saw her even even still like like in the anesthesia i saw her like a glimpse of the back of her and i was like carrie carrie like that's the first thing i remember coherently saying after the surgery so they put me in the back of the car um they go they pick up uh, another doll and she's like love her my surgery sister we were in the the same room at the recovery home and like like we still talk to this day so <laughs> so we're then taken to the recovery home and they immediately like put us in the beds and we're covered with heated blankets because they know the anesthesia has us cold Y'all, I'm shaking. I'm shivering so hard. Like, like I don't think I've ever been that cold in my life. I've never been that cold before. So they get the heated blankets. They just layer us up with blankets. They give us hot chicken soup. Um, I think some medication. Probably the antibiotic um, and a painkiller or something. I don't remember. I All of that honestly was hazy. But I remember eating chicken soup like my life depended on it. So there was also this beet juice, beet juice in surgery recovery, a lifesaver, a lifesaver. So 
I consume all that and then I just lay down and this was the first time laying down was nightmarish like having to lay on my stomach was just not and even like right now like last night laying on my stomach I can't stand it but I, I had to just get into some position to where it was bearable and I went to sleep and that was the day of surgery so I woke up the following day and I wasn't I wasn't doing too bad I'm not gonna lie to you I just didn't have much of an appetite um, we had three meals a day like full meals a day unlimited snacks unlimited drinks like we were treated okay spoiled at the recovery home so I really didn't have much of an appetite but I ate what I could and then I had to go to my first post-op appointment I say first because you do one like the day after your surgery and then you do a one month post-op appointment so I will be going back to Miami in about two weeks for my post-op appointment the second one so I went back to 305 plastic surgery they just kind of took a look at me asked me how I'm doing how I'm feeling um, and that was really it it was really just like a check-in to see how I'm doing so after my appointment, I then went to have my first massage. I feel like for all the BBL dolls, like the painful part that everyone talks about is the massages. So I got my first massage the first day after my BBL procedure and it hurt. It, it hurt, like I can't say it didn't hurt, but it wasn't like excruciating. I'll say it really didn't get to the point where it's feeling near excruciating until the following week. And I feel like maybe it could have been some anesthesia or painkillers in my body or whatever, but that first one, I can't say it was the worst one. I'd say the fifth one was definitely the worst one um and since the fifth one it just kind of went back to not being as bad so the massage consisted of them massaging my back um really trying to work the fluid um out of the incisions out through the incisions and they did that on my back my sides and in my front abdominal area there's no contact with my butt whatsoever so the whole time like except for the massages i have my faha on like it's on if you don't know the faha is like the compression garment that you wear after surgery and i've been wearing mine 24 7 except for massages and showers since the surgery so it's actually pretty comfortable it sounds uncomfortable and i guess it can be i really only get uncomfortable in it when i'm sleeping but otherwise like sometimes when i take it off i feel like everything just starts expanding like the swelling is immediate especially those first few days after surgery like you're gonna want to be in your faha because as soon as you unhook it all and like the swelling starts to happen it feels like your body's expanding and it hurts so bad so it's almost like it's for comfort too so definitely girls get you a quality faha i'm gonna show you guys my faha i got my faha from pretty girl curves i got two of the fajas from uh, 305 plastic surgery but me personally i think that my faha from pretty girl curves fits me really well it feels really good it feels really tight i also got an extra small and i will say that the fajas that i got from the surgery practice were both smalls and those smalls for me are like too big now so i'm gonna have to get them taken in maybe after getting them taken in the fit will be a bit better i also do need to get my extra small from pretty girl curves taken in because the smallest size that they offer in the fajas from pretty girl curves is an extra small so i'm on like the third row of hooks on the smallest size faja they have so anything that i do further would have to be custom and i've heard that like custom fajas highly recommended anyway so i am not upset about that at all but i definitely recommend going to pretty girl curves for your faja 
Mine is comfortable. It compresses my waist and my back, but it doesn't compress my hips or my butt, which is what you want. You want to give all of your, your new grafted fat the room to breathe and to just settle in. Like you don't want to compress it and kill the fat cells. So I feel like this, this does that really well. It just allows my body to heal properly, to heal in the way that I want it to. So if you are interested in a Pretty Girl Curse Faha, check out my link below, girls. And be as well like me. I stayed in the recovery home from the Wednesday that my surgery was on to the following Tuesday. The following Tuesday is when I flew back home uh, to finish my recovery here. Uh, but in the time that I was in the recovery home, y'all, I had a great time. The meals, again, immaculate. I had all types of pasta salad, barbecue, lobster, like amazing breakfast tea the beet juice is awesome i rave about this beet juice because not only is it good but it helps you heal and they put pineapple juice in it so it doesn't taste like real beady it's really good also they did these pineapple bowls for us y'all i had like shrimp rice like it was a lot of fun it was a lot of fun so i just i highly recommend snatched and curve i have their website also linked in the description box below because i really feel like part of your whole surgery experience is the recovery and having a really good recovery home is honestly probably like make or break with the whole process not in, not just about like how you feel but like having people that are genuinely taking care of you and care about you liking the way you look like liking your outcome and I was really cared for they would help me get dressed when I need to but they also wouldn't baby me they kind of basically nurtured me into being able to take care of myself again so y'all check out the link below if you want to go because I'm gonna be back at Snatch and Curve I'm, I'm gonna let you know that right now just oof. Car Carrie's gonna see me again I tell you that I also found my surgery sisters in the recovery home. So I was a little weary about like doing a shared space. I'm I'm really just kind of like a to myself type of person. Like I just like being by myself. So like the thought of sharing a room, I was like, oh, like I don't know about that. But like the price was really good and I did need 24-7 care. Well, I felt like I did. And for those first couple of days, that's not wrong at all. So they gave me all of that for a price that was reasonable. And I was like, okay, I can compromise on, you know, being in a room with a bed next to someone else in another bed. And like, it was great. It was honestly great. Like the girls in the house were so sweet, so much fun. Like we still stay connected and talk to this day and kind of like help each other through the process and share information that we find to help each other get through it even easier. So you kind of find your support system. Like I, I really, I can't recommend a good recovery home, but especially snatched and curved enough because it just felt, I just felt community and I just felt like I was being healed almost by my own family. Like it's black owned, black female owned and operated. Girl, where else are you gonna get that? So while I was there, I would Uber to get my post-op massages. Now, Snatch and Curve does offer post-op massages. I just opted to do mine with the plastic surgery practice. And my massages were actually done at Vixen Plastic Surgery. I think they have some contract with 305 to where the massages are just done at Vixen. Was not an issue at all. It wasn't far from the recovery home, so everything was cool. I get my massages once a day with the exception of Sunday. They're not open on Sunday, so skip Sunday. And I got my last massage in Miami, like literally on the day that I flew back home. In the Ubers in Miami, like they, they're pretty understanding what's going on like with the plastic surgery scene. So if you have to kneel in the back of the Uber, they completely understand. Like I did not have a single Uber that was like, don't kneel in my car. Like they all let me do it. They were okay. They're asking how I was feeling. Like it was cool. And the airport, like getting through the airport, walking to my gate, easy. The whole airport thing, easy. My flight home was about, it was like an hour and a half, two hours. 
when I got on the plane, I sat on my BBL pillow. It was pretty uncomfortable. Like I, I, I don't personally enjoy using the BBL pillow, but I did it. And as soon as we were able to like take off our seatbelts in the air, I kneeled. And I just kneeled for as long as I could. And then when the seatbelt sign came back on, I got up and I sat on my BBL pillow and I continued the rest of the way. And when we landed, as soon as the seatbelt sign came off again, that's when I got up and I exited the plane. And that was it. Uh, so travel was not excruciating. It's uncomfortable because for me personally, the BBL pillow, but other than that, like, it's okay and eh, some people may look but not really again it's Miami like you're not the first or the last so now that I'm back home I I've just been taking it easy like I really just sleep eat and get massages that's it that's literally it I can't do too much because I don't want to mess up my results I still can't sit I still have to sleep on my stomach I can't sleep on my sides because it can mess up my hips I can't sleep on my back because it can mess up my butt so I'm just like kneeling or walking around all day that's it I really want to sit I'm not gonna lie to you but I don't um, I get my massages at nip and tuck plastic surgery in Atlanta I absolutely love my masseuse Darnishia she's amazing 10 out of 10 like I look forward to our massages because she's like not just good at massaging she's just a real people person like she's a good person so I absolutely love being able to go and see her I will have their link down below in the description box also for all my girls in the city if you are looking for post-op lymphatic massages that's where to go don't hang up the books now do not book her up and I can't get a massage don't do that like like you know support my girl but relax relax I'll say now 15 days post-op I'm super happy that I did what I did by getting my BBL I love my results like I just I feel so excited for the spring I have a good three months of recovery I'm going to do the whole three so I'm ready to pop out in March and once I pop out, I'm not going back inside. I'm not going back inside. I'm so excited. But if you're considering getting a BBL or any plastic surgery, my biggest advice would be do it. Do it. This, I, this, I'm not going to lie. This was easy. This was easy. Like, it was almost too easy. It was almost too easy. And that's concerning because why is it so easy? Because... If I want to get a little even thicky thicker, girl, I'm finna get around too. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's that easy, at least for the BBL. That's the only procedure I've gotten, so I can't speak on the others. But this was easy. I've enjoyed the journey. I'm enjoying the journey right now. Yes, yeah, sleeping sucks. Massages hurt a little bit. But, like, I look good. I feel good. I'm recovering cool. Like, this has been cool. So, ladies, save up your money. Take care of the body that you have. Love the body that you have. Because no doctor can make you love yourself. You, you got to love yourself. Before I did this, I was like, I look real good. I look, like, you cannot tell me I don't look good. I look amazing. Now I just look amazing-er. That's it. Like, if you don't love you first, you got to take care of that. Because that BBL... It's, it's not it's not gonna do it the bbl is not going to give you self-love i just i just really want to stress that thank you for watching my bbl tell all video i hope that you found something something in this video valuable i really gave you all that i had everything that i experienced and i'm gonna keep sharing with you guys and letting you know how my journey is going so if you found this video even just a little bit useful please give it a like subscribe to this channel because i'd love to keep you around and share this with a friend like anyone who is curious about a bbl you're getting a bbl but don't know how to quite explain it to someone and you just need someone else's words or someone else's journey 
to help guide them along what may be happening with you please 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 share this along and let it help who it may thank you again for watching i hope you have an amazing new year dance into 2023 and i will see you next time bye guys